Amanda Hudson for Good afternoon, Tickle and Luxon program. Amanda speaking. Yes, Amanda, this is Gary Thompson calling. In regards to your protocols that you're teaching for um, naloxone, I'm just looking at the website from Nova Scotia. Yes. Yeah, it has you know, step one, stimulate, shake and shout, call 911, give naloxone. And step four, it's got in big letters, start chest compressions or full CPR and or rescue breathing as trained mm -hmm. well the proper the only proper way to give uh, an opiate overdose is step three is respiratory assist for a hundred sound medical reasons you have to stabilize the patient because without we're given naloxone as step three Naloxone can cause, can cause tachycardia, and the person's already oxygen starved, so we will all already have tachycardia, a racing heart. And people leave their naloxone elsewhere, right? And so they see this big chest compressions, and they're given chest compressions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, the naloxone doesn't always work. It's not magic. Oxygen, they can uh, just like as in a uh, anesthesiologist, they overdose on fentanyl and all kinds of different substances. And the, the only thing keeping you alive during surgery is ventilations, they never ever pound on your chest. Because if your heart stops secondary to respiratory arrest, it's because your brain damage lack of oxygen. Yes, I don't know. And I don't know why you're not worried about the incident. Toronto Public Health, I understand, went out there in 2015 in the fall uh -huh. and uh, taught you guys this protocol. And uh, you started using it in the spring of 2016. Uh -huh. I've talked to uh, Cindy McIsaac at uh, Direction 180. Yeah, the first story, in, you know, and their staff, one of our staff members is uh, ex-EMS. It's causing, uh, it's workplace harassment and bullying. And it's needless stress in the workplace because the staff, the clinical staff, know that protocol's wrong. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Oh, we got all kinds of... The first story in the news after he got in Loxone was Mr. Marshall, a man named Mr. Marshall. He says, I gave him Loxone and started chest compressions right in the news. No, 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 because the man was obviously alive, right? You don't give chest compressions to someone who's alive. I've been published in the medical journals. They had a coroner's inquest that just ended December 20th. In Toronto, Brad Chapman, jury's recommendation, do not deny rescue breathing from anyone because there's hundreds of causes of breathing emergency and you need air ASAP. I don't know, because guess what's going to happen out here? I know of thousands personally, non-drug overdoses in the morgue given chest compressions. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, not oh, good. You know, you wouldn't want it to happen to you, eh, if you had a respiratory emergency? Mm -hmm. No, thank you very much for sharing that. Well, I don't know. Do, when is it going to change? Because you want to save lives. You know, anybody knows, they in, a child instinctively knows that that protocol is wrong. I knew it in grade two. I remember my grade two school lesson. The human body's like a furnace without air, the fire dies. And then in grade four, you take how the heart and lungs work. And then in grade six, and then in grade eight, then you get in high school. And Boy Scouts and Girl Guides, they get their first aid badge. And it's stressed rescue breathing because children will have respiratory problems, not, not cardiac. They encourage everyone to follow 911's instructions, not to immediately begin chest compression to rescue breath. And that's why... The protocols 
what we actually share with the public, uh, specifically mentions to call 911 immediately and well, follow their instructions, whatever that, that may be. Well, a doctor even calls 911 if he runs into a medical emergency. Everyone calls 911, but a doctor would never give chest compressions or tell a person to give chest compressions. A doctor teaching that would lose his license. Jesus, or a nurse, you you guys are applying for safer consumption sites down there, OPSs, and the nurses aren't going to be following that instructions because they would lose their license. No nurse would do that. First class in nursing school, practical class, how to change a bedpan. Second class in practical class is first aid, rescue breathing, because a nurse is going to see a thousand respiratory patients before she ever runs into a cardiac arrest situation. And if it's a cardiac arrest secondary to respiratory arrest, you need advanced cardiac life support methods. Chest compressions only is just going to make sure you stay dead. CPR is going to do very little. Cheevers. you got to open up the chest and, and massage the heart with your hands. And Vasopressors, the paddles, the whole nine yards if your heart stops secondary to respiratory arrest. Anyway, I'm just trying to save lives and it could be yours, man. All right, thank you very much. You have a great day, eh? You too. Bye boy. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They're fucking nuts. They're nuts. <laughs> Absolutely fucking insane. You know that, eh? <laughs> Go around teaching this and that. Go around teaching this. Look at this. Look at that. That person's alive. We're cyanotic. <laughs> they were chain stokes, respiration, meiosis, pinpoint pupils. And might have seizures. Yeah, seizures. <laughs> Person that has a seizure gets oxygen. Yeah. Anyway, they're just killing everybody on purpose. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. Sides of opiate overdose. Sides of overdose can mimic any of the hundreds of causes of breathing emergency through illness or injury. <laughs> and they're killing you all. <laughs> ah, the chest compressions. Chest compressions only. It's for sudden witness cardiac arrest for a person who's never been trained. And they're training people to murder you. <laughs> That's your tax dollars at <laughs> work. Tax dollars paying <laughs> people to teach you how to murder everybody. Don't worry. They're going to be sued big time. Suing the government big time. Guess who pays for the whole shot? The taxpayer. <laughs> Summer and dirt. Toronto Public Health goes up there in October 2015. Tells them how to murder people. And they do it. Must have got a lot of funding, eh? <laughs> eh? Mm. But why are we going to do that? Well, there's funding. The taxpayers got lots of money. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Tell everybody to do it. Anyway. <laughs> Wake up, people. Wake up. Read the comment box on the YouTube. All the medical information's there. I watch you make yourself sick. Because you know instinctively, breathing emergency, you better give them some air ASAP. Don't murder everyone.